What's going on gamers and welcome back to another common mistakes you need to avoid. Step one, most common mistake I see, players not spending enough money. And it's simple, if you don't have the cash you're following me, just go over to your mom's bedroom and take her credit card. Alright, stop and welcome back to another Ula La video. And also if you're new here, hi, I'm Tectone, pleasure to meet you. Hope you enjoy the video. So, we're talking about the top 10 common mistakes that I see new players making. Also, the top 10 mistakes that I made when I first started playing. We've all probably made these mistakes when we've started playing this game. But also, if you're a more experienced player, there are probably some things on this list that I'm going to talk about that maybe you don't know about. So, make sure to stick around if you are curious to see what those are. So, the problem that this game has, and the problem that the players have, is that it's posed as a very simple game, and the players perceive it as a very simple game. So a lot of things that are actually a little bit more technical, a little bit more difficult, everybody's just used to everything being so cut and dry that they don't really think about it more. They don't really think about how to do this as effectively as possible. There are a lot of things that you can do and doing them is correct, but is it the right time to do it? So that is what this video is gonna be about. I hope you enjoy, well, let's get into it. Okay, first thing, getting it out of the way, the most obvious one, okay? I swear to God, the list gets better than this, all right? First thing, don't play alone. Get with people as soon as possible. This game is not meant to be played alone, okay? Ready for this? You need to make friends and meet people to actually play a game, and it's actually really, really, really fun. So, join a Discord, do the in-game party joining option, just meet people, get in there, and group up. If you need a Discord to join where there's people looking for groups, make sure to check out my Discord. It's another link below, okay? Other than that, going to chain it into number two is knowing how to gauge the people who are in your team. There's going to be a lot of slippery people, okay? It's 2019. Everybody's a scumbag, okay? At least uh, some people are, okay? And you're going to run into them at some point in your life, okay? You need to make sure that they're not taking advantage of you. And there's a good way to do this. Combat power is one thing, but the other thing that you can do, and a lot of people still don't know about this option, if you click the EXP in the shell option on the right side of your screen, you're going to be, be you're going to be prompted with combat stats. What the combats actually show you is, well, how is everybody doing in combat? And this is a great way to check how people are doing or what they're not doing, more specific. But it is very important if you use combat stats to like kind of gauge how people are in your party make sure to do an aoe fight so a multi-target fight and then a single target fight and then if they're if they're sucking on both ends of the spectrum get them out of there do something else now this works especially well for dps for tanks and healers it's a little bit more tricky and you're gonna need to know a little bit more than just combat stats you need to figure things out but this will at least help you with the dps regard at least in my opinion Next thing, quick battles. Yes, they're extremely exciting. It's like, oh, you get all the goodies. But the problem is, is that you need to know when to use them and when to not use them, okay? Some people don't know this. When you use quick battles five minutes after, you get a 10% damage buff. And the reason why you do this is because quick battles are there to increase your progress rapidly over two hours. Everybody gets two hours of progress in combat, okay? But... It also gives you that 10% damage buff in case you're hitting a wall. And quick battles should only be used if you literally cannot beat whatever boss you're on. Do not use quick battles if you're able to already clear the content easily because then you're wasting all that progress. Because what quick battles does is it does two hours of whatever floor that you can clear at the highest, at your peak. So whatever the highest floor that you cleared, that is what it's gonna do two hours of progress on. So you want to make sure before you do that, you've pushed as far as you can and you cannot push any further. Don't trust this lady, okay? Look, I get it, all right? Some of y'all are furries out there. Let's just, it's 2019 once again. Some of y'all are gonna be furries. Some of y'all are gonna see this girl and you're like, okay, take off my money, please, and go on a date with me. First of all, she's a virtual girl, okay? She doesn't know you exist. Second of all, she doesn't exist. So don't buy into her garbage, okay? Do not buy into this women's garbage. A lot of people start this game and they see this as, oh, this must be the gotcha system. I'm gonna spend 200 bucks right now and open all the packs. No, don't, chill out. This girl is nothing but trouble, okay? The first thing that I highly recommend to do is figure out what build you wanna go for before you start opening packs. Don't just open shit like randomly. You have another thing called the black market and you can know what you're getting before you buy it and that's extremely, that's extremely beneficial. This one, you can do it whenever they give you free passes, whenever the game messes up and it goes down for maintenance. But other than that, 
maybe someone once or twice and like that's like it if you do a temple fine you do two temples fine but i'm seeing people starting the game and ripping like 10 temples relax it's it's not good okay this lady will bait you the legendary chance is ridiculously low the epic chance is ridiculously low just wait know what you're purchasing before you get it this is not the gotcha system okay the gotcha system is the clatter cards it's the blacksmith refreshing it's the pet system mainly the pet system this is not what the game's all about okay okay y'all know i'm an advocate for doing what you want okay trust me I get it. It's your game. You want to play it your way. But there's so many cuties in this game, okay? There's a lot. You have the unicorn gorilla, okay? You have the pot belly frog. You have, you have, oh my God, this one. If y'all haven't seen this one, you have the flying squirrel. It's adorable. What's important, it's very important to do. Do not get distracted by the cuties, okay? Focus up use whatever pet is benefiting you the most okay and trust me pets are a large majority of the damage as you can tell right here look at my tank literally 70 percent of his damage is pet damage my my wife frame half of her damage is pet damage me 25 percent. the healer 50 percent of his damage is pet damage use the proper pet if you need me to make a pet guide let me know in the comments and i will do so post haste and actually know quite a bit that could actually benefit you and now that i'm thinking about it yeah i should probably make that so pets okay if you're a tank you're going to be using a dps pet okay the dps pet is going to have a little paw on the top right corner if you're a healer or if you're a damage dealer you're going to be using an assist pet okay but if you have a legendary pet of a dps or assist and you're a dps -er or a healer you can feel free to use the legendary dps because it all comes down to the attribute and the big two things that you want to take in mind of especially as a healer in a dps is the attack and the assist okay the attack slot is going to gauge how much damage your pet will do and the assist will actually tell you how much more damage they're making you do so whatever the largest number is for attack and assist use that pet don't get baited by the cuties and for tanks do whatever it's so hard to gauge what the right pet is for a tank but uh my buddy's using a legendary camel and he's doing outrageous damage as you can see right here from this chart so hey maybe camels are overpowered but probably not but yeah that's a big thing just don't use what cute just please use what's good it's way more fun for Grespin to have a little monkey you can wait use the monkey later but for now just focus on what's good okay next one and this is a real big one for choke points for real bottlenecks in your gameplay experience there's going to be times where you don't have enough shells in order to progress uh your gear as much as you'd like and you're gonna have to pick and choose which gear piece to upgrade first okay this sh i feel like this should be obvious but just in case that it's not if you're dps or a healer you're going to upgrade your weapons and your rings first okay because they give you more damage and that's what you want to focus on because even as a healer the more damage you do the bigger heals they use so the more attack you have the higher your heal set so if you're a healer or a dps and you're in the back line upgrade your weapons and your ring first because they all give you attack if you're a tank it's gonna come down to this. If you're losing because you can't kill the boss fast enough, upgrade your weapons. If you're losing because your front line is dying, then upgrade your armor first. So make sure you know what you need to upgrade rather than just upgrading things randomly. And another real quick one, everything in this game is universal. Stop worrying about, should I upgrade this or which pet should I upgrade first? Understand that every pet skill, every pet trainer level, it's universal for, it's universal for all pets. This is universal for every single pet. This is universal for every single pet that you're gonna use. Upgrading your armor, you're not upgrading your armor, you're upgrading your armor slots. You're not upgrading your abilities, you're upgrading your ability slots. So don't worry worry about it okay everything in this game is universal on the subject of abilities i want to talk about this okay i see a lot of people using whatever their highest rarity is because they want to see the pretty number at their bottom of their screen read a higher combat power okay it, that doesn't matter this combat power it kind of matters but really not that much as you'd think what's important is using abilities that have synergy over what's the highest rarity so getting a general understanding of your class and understanding what ab abilities work well with others is very important so for example i use soul seal it's a blue ability but i have another ability that can combo with it which is soul wave so the, the first ability puts a soul seal on a target and fall off after 24 seconds but then 
then on my third slot, I put in Soul Wave, okay? I put in Soul Wave, and that'll actually refresh the seal duration back to uh, a fresh zero seconds, but keep all of the pre-existing stats. The other thing is, I'm using a two mana ability, a Summon Violent Frog, and the reason why I'm doing that is because it's raw damage, but the more important thing is, I could use another uh, three mana legendary ability, but if I were to do that, it would actually mess up the skill rotation and my soul seal would fall off before it could actually get refreshed then therefore i would be refreshing nothing so understanding how your abilities work is extremely important rather than just focus on oh this one's golden it must be good just know how things work and if you need some help with that feel free to let me know what class you need help with in the comments and i will do my best to get a video out for you as soon as possible you are going to get stuck in this game it is going to happen just remember and you heard it here first okay just be patient and i'm gonna leave it at that okay if you're stuck it's okay give it a day come back you won't be stuck i promise all right i'm saving the most important one for last and the most complicated one for last so if you're still here thank you so much watch time helps a lot also if you're new here hey please subscribe only said it once this video that's a goddamn record okay so static builds okay people always ask me what should i use that question is impossible to answer unless you don't care about the person who's asking you that question there is no one size fits all in this game there's not there's just not because there's so many different things to do in this game so for example afk okay multi-target okay so you're gonna build a multi-target build for AFK. For hunting, you're gonna have a single target damage dealing build to kill the boss as quick as possible, unless the boss is multi-target. And then you have to have a multi-target hunting build. But then from there, what if the boss has shields? And then from there, you have to run a strip onto your build. But what if the boss puts debuffs? Then you have to put a prevent debuff into your build. So when people say, what is the best build? know that that's impossible you have to understand what exact scenario you are in and how to build and shovel the dirt out of the situation and become free again free at last <laughs> jesus christ it's just important to know okay it's important to know that there is no one size fits all you need to know what you're dealing with and you need to build around it okay that is gonna do it for this one y'all hey we hit 10k homies we have been getting so many subscribers lately. Thank you all so much. You right there, you sitting at home. Yes, you're a part of this. Unless you haven't subscribed and then please subscribe. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get the hell out of here, y'all. I hope I helped y'all with something. And uh, hey, dude, in two weeks time when PVP comes out and I get to make gameplay videos, oh my God, I cannot wait to showcase PVP. I'm going to get the hell out of here, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the video. I've been teched on y'all. Been great. Hope y'all are having a damn good one. And as always, peace.